Hi, welcome to this business coach kit training session. Coaching takes place in meetings with the clients, either face to face or online. Making these successful requires preparation and a process. Successful coaching meetings that help your client mean you will retain that client for longer. So in this coaching session, we're going to cover how to start coaching a new client, how to prepare for a coaching meeting, how to structure a coaching meeting, and how to keep clients on track and getting value. We'll also talk about meeting follow-up. Follow -up. A quick word about using the Business Coach Kit Coach Portal for running your coaching meetings. Here are your clients. So you can use this online with a shared screen or on a, a laptop or a tablet in a face-to-face -face meeting or even print these bits of screens off to do the meetings. So the rest of this uh, video talks as if you're doing a face-to-face -face meeting using largely paper, but you could in fact use the system. So here's the roadmap, which uh, we're going to talk through with our client. Here's where we track progress against the various elements of the roadmap so we can control the status, we can control the priority, we can access resources and we can get guidance to each element. We can make our notes here, actually right on the system as opposed to in some other system. And we can update and refer back to our client's objectives. So this system, this portal uh, supports the client way of running client coaching meetings that the video talks about but it's not uh, mandatory you can you can do this all on paper if you want to systemization consists of regular usually monthly meetings initially these will be about building the relationship and opening out the issues rather than closing in on solutions even so all your meetings even the earlier ones are planned and planned and structured by you but to start with they may be um, rather less uh, structured than you, than you would like. Um, they're about you and the client getting to know each other, about exploring the issues that the clients are facing, about the client getting to understand the way systemization coaching works, and about you really getting to understand what it is the client needs. Over time, these meetings turn into something which is more formal, more structured, and looks more like a management meeting. So we gradually develop these meetings into a routine, efficient and effective management review based on KPIs. Clearly to do that, we need the business to be being systemized uh, as well. So you, we're putting in place these uh, KPIs, systems, processes and procedures that are required to run the business that way. Our aim is to develop the client and their management team to the point where they can take these forward uh, and the uh, coaching can end. And this typically takes 12 to 24 months. So our coaching is at the consultancy end of coaching. We do coach the client. We understand that we need to figure out the way their mind works, figure out the issues that their mindset issues that are holding them back. But we're more likely to suggest answers and uh, explain the way we've seen this solved before than we are to um, spend a session trying to drag the answer out of them, ask them what they think. We believe the best way to change their mindset is by action to change their business, then they start to believe it can be different. So we believe that success for most businesses is 20% leadership, but 80% is just being organized and being efficient and effective. And we coach accordingly. Just a word about the systemization coaching roadmap. Uh, this is a graphical representation of the systemization planner. We're not going to talk about the detail of what you do in systemization in this training session. This is covered in a couple of other training sessions about the planner and roadmap, uh, and also about systemization in general and how it, how it helps businesses. So this is about the conduct of the meetings rather than the deliverables of systemization. So we're going to start with a new client. So somewhere down the line, you've had a sales meeting. Um, the client has agreed to sign up with you. You gave them a couple of things to get them started, uh, arranged to uh, a date for the first meeting. This is probably some weeks later. 
So a week prior to this meeting, send an email to remind them of the date uh, and ch chase up the pre-work you gave them, whether it might be the systemization plan or a vision tool. Um, confirm the venue and parking facilities. Uh, you don't want to turn up and find you've got to park 20 minutes away and you're going to be late for the meeting. Before the meeting, review the content of the client file. We're going to talk about the client file in a moment, but it should include the sales meeting notes, the contract, and the prep work you gave them. Uh, in your client notebook, whether that's paper or electronic, enter the date uh, of the meeting and bullet point the topics you want to cover. So there's a template agenda for first meeting and for ongoing meetings, uh, two different agendas in the Business Coach Kit resources. Um, uh, your desired outcomes really for the first meeting we'll talk about in a minute, but also you want to, if the client just sits there and looks at you uh, and doesn't say anything, you need to have a, a roadmap through the meeting. So you don't want to be sitting there looking at each other saying that thing. So outline for yourself the meeting structure, rehearse it in your mind before you go in. Never arrive late. We are teaching routine organization effectiveness. It doesn't get us off on the right foot if we turn up late for the first meeting. So client file, um, you can use whatever you like for this, whether it's uh, the old manila hard copy folders or a tablet app or uh, your laptop or Dropbox or whatever uh, gets the job done. Um, you want to minimize technology in the meeting. Do not open up your laptop in a coaching meeting. It just serves as a barrier between the pair of you and you'll spend all your time tapping away rather than listening. But uh, Tablets where you can use a stylus to handwrite, they're fine, or the old fashioned red and black notebooks, also fine. As your business grows, you need to be organized about this. When you're running 20 clients, um, you, you may be doing two or even three client sessions in a day. Um, you have to be able to have these things to hand and have to contain everything that get you up to speed on the last meeting um, quickly. The last meeting was probably a month ago. You've seen 19 other clients since then. You forgot what you talked about. You need to have a little portable office with you so that you're uh, effective in the way you manage these clients. You hit the ground running. You do not want to spend the first 10 minutes of your coaching meeting sitting reading what you told them last time. They're paying for your time. Uh, from minute one, you need to be providing value. Um, so first meeting structure, um, they won't know what's going to happen. They'll be probably slightly anxious. Um, so you need to steer the meeting. You need to remain in control of it. You need to be making sure you cover the points you wanted to cover, the things you need to achieve in the meeting. But you need really to let the um, client control the speed, direction, and topic. Um, but but ideally, the things that you, you you need to cover fairly quickly in the meeting are a recap on their issues. So you've gone through your sales meeting notes. You know what their problems were that you they've hired you to solve. But get them to talk through those again. They, they may need to refresh their memory a little bit about what they said as well. Uh, review and discuss the prep work they have or have not done. It doesn't really matter whether they've done it or not. Um, it has served its purpose, which is at the end of the when they've made the decision to buy from you, you've immediately given them something to, to get on with so that they haven't had time to sit there worrying about how much money it was going to cost and whether it was going to work or not. So um, if they haven't done it, then this will probably bring up the topic of time. I didn't have time to do this. And you can kind of plunge straight into the, you know, systemization is a choice. The way you manage a business is a choice um, and uh, how you spend your time is a choice. So you can um, start to talk about the, you know, this is a problem they're going to have to, address um, if they're going to change their business. If they have done it, that's great. You can go through it with them and uh, you'll learn something and you'll start to identify some things that need to be fixed. You want to come out of this meeting with some measurable outcomes for your coaching engagement. Um, and the client may struggle to, to give you kind of measurable outcomes. It may be rather vague about this. You may have to help them. Uh, what I suggest is you, you, you talk with them about this. You not note down what they say and try and uh, come up with some kind of agreed um, measurable. And then you go away and write them up and say, this is what I heard. 
email them back to them and say, you know, this is what I think you're trying to achieve. Is that right? So it gives them a chance to think about it offline. But you do need, do need to do this because you're going to come back to it, these outcomes uh, fairly frequently. And also introduce the concept of developing this coaching meeting from initially a fairly unstructured uh, discussion about problems and what they might do about it into something that becomes their routine, efficient uh, meeting for managing their business based on a KPI sheet. Most clients will probably have some burning issues they want to get off their chest straight away in the meeting. And you need to let them do this. And this is a really useful exercise. So, you know, you'll, you, they'll plunge into something and you can listen and make the odd comment. And, you know, they're, they're, they may have bottled this up for a while. Then suddenly now they've got someone to talk to about their business, about their problems. So it's quite cathartic for them. So, you know, you, you just kind of um, let, them, let them have their head on this. And you may have the odd suggestion or question. Um, and you may have some answers straight away. I mean, it may be something you've seen 20 times before. And you can say, well, you know, have you thought about this? Or do you think this is the cause of the problem? But it may be something that you've, um, you know, you don't necessarily have, uh, you, you can't recognize the pattern. You don't have the answers to hand. If you're fairly new to coaching, it's maybe something you haven't dealt with before. So really you have to kind of encourage them to think it through for themselves, get all of the um, factors out on the table as far as possible, um, take copious notes, you know, offer um, tea and sympathy. Um, but don't necessarily commit to a solution. So you can use things like clean questioning or five whys or um, this kind of approach to, to try and help them get this out on the table. Then afterwards, you'll have a chance to, you know, reflect on what they said, look at the business coach kit resources, read up on it and, and come back with some perhaps more concrete uh, advice to them. So you need to be prepared in the first meeting and in fact in any meeting for uh, left field questions, challenges, issues, um, and uh, deal with those professionally and helpfully, even if you don't actually have the answer to hand. So yeah, you want them to do most of the talking. Um, ask questions that force them to clarify their thinking on a topic. So quite often the, the issue as first um, raised or talked about by the client is not very well formulated. Um, it may be a symptom. In fact, it's almost always a symptom rather than a cause. And you need to kind of push back and ask them some questions. You know, why do you think it's that? Why do you think this is happening? So force them to clarify their thinking. You know, the first step in solving a problem is to clearly define the problem. Draw brief parallels from your experience. So stories really help. So I've seen this before. This reminds me of such and such. Or, you know, it's a bit like when I did this for this company. So um, stories really help. Um, cast light on a on a problem, and every time they you know they during this first meeting, every time they raise an issue or um, uh, talk about a problem, it's an opportunity for you to start to introduce some systemize uh, systemization principles, the key things: clear accountabilities, delegation, processes, measurements. So, you know, I, I guarantee that anything they come up with is okay. This is a problem. This is what I'd like to do. The, the systemization, you know, is a is a or lack of systemization, is at least a contributing factor, if not the the root cause of it. And um, you can start to you know put some of these things in place. Maybe even some actions come out of this. Okay, maybe you should, maybe you'd like to think about doing this. Um, during a meeting, you want to identify no more than two. I would say two. You want to give them two because this is a first meeting. You want to send them away or leave them with some concrete stuff they can change in their business. So you must give them a couple of actions, but don't give them more than two because it will be a bit overwhelming and you know it's too, too difficult or too much work for them to, to solve that. So give them two immediate actions that are going to build some confidence. At the end of the meeting, Recap the two actions you've just agreed and any uh, that you've taken yourself. Make sure you've covered the ground you wanted to cover, particularly the um, what their issues are and what they'd like to achieve from coaching, and then agree the date and time for the next meeting. This is often the time to, um, again, start to, to breed some good habits in them and uh, 
some business owners will turn up well organized have a diary notebook take notes to the meeting um, put the meeting in a diary straight away other business owners will turn up with a scruffy piece of paper and an old pencil um, and you know when you say let's let's agree the date and time for the next meeting they have no way of knowing what they'll be doing on that day so you need to start in, introducing in a in a um, kind way at this point you know it might be an idea you know set an example to your people um, start being organized it, you know make sure you've got a, a notebook for every meeting that you take notes in uh, of every meeting and make sure you've always got your diary with you and there's no excuse not to nowadays it's to any phone has got the diary on um, so again you're trying to educate them into how to be organized write up your notes while the meeting is fresh in your mind ideally the same day ideally immediately after the meeting do not leave it because a couple of days later you'll have had a few more meetings you'll have forgotten all about this one so you need to do it while it's still fresh you can remember the conversation you've obviously got notes that you're referring to to tr trigger that memory but um, you, you you do it quickly and also it just builds up work you know, don't, don't want to end up like one of your clients you need to be organized and efficient so write up your notes and the, the notes have got two purposes one is it goes back to the client and it, it um, gives them a little bit of additional value their notes may not have been that clear but they can say okay yes that's what we talked about here's the here are the actions I need to do and um, these are the these are the topics we discussed and the, and the thoughts that we have and also it serves as your prep for the next meeting so once you've sent them you um, make sure they're stored in the client folder so that they're ready for the next meeting after this first meeting include a list of uh, your the clients objectives for your work together as agreed in the meeting you'll, you'll probably have to work on the wording with this and you'll have to say this is what I heard do you agree um, that these this is what we're trying to achieve and you'll return to these from time to time so they must be written down somewhere attach any relevant guides or tools from the business coach kit resources um, if it's to do with their actions or perhaps a topic you discussed maybe it's a topic that you weren't able to really uh, give an opinion on in the meeting where you can dig out the relevant guides and attach them to the email so again you're giving them some additional value now remind them of the date time and agenda items for the next meeting um, so the agenda items would be essentially the things that you raised as um, objectives last time check the meetings in your business diary um, phones and tablets don't always replicate properly so if you're using technology to uh, book the meeting and it, you've done it on your iPad or your smartphone um, check it's replicated to your main diary and all your other electronic devices um, at this moment so you know when you send the email this is next meeting it's in your diary you are not going to forget it there's nothing that um, destroys your credibility as a business coach than being disorganized yourself and not turning up for a meeting is pretty disorganized so now you've had the first meeting that's out of the way and this next section we're going to talk about the way you prepare for and organize the ongoing the repeating meetings thereafter so when you get down the line a little way with your client they'll be producing um, management reports KPI sheets um, management um, accounts various things before the meeting so if you got to that point and they're producing them for you before the meeting and they haven't arrived um, just chivvy them up a little bit and say okay where's where are our, where's our management information again what you're teaching them is it's highly inefficient use of time for all the people in the management meeting to spend the first half an hour reading all the reports and numbers that they should have looked at before the meeting okay um, make sure the client file whether it's electronic or paper or a mixture contains copies of your notes in the last meeting any intervening correspondence so um, you know you may have had emails or phone calls perhaps you've you've um, edited some stuff for them or helped them with uh, spreadsheets and make sure you've got copies of all of this um, so that it's to hand in the meeting and ready for preparation for the meeting any reports we just talked about and anything else that you've sent to them so this is all in the client file so you've got your mobile office 10 minutes before the meeting starts you go through this note your bullet points on your meeting uh, uh, planner and and you're ready to go um, 
make sure that you've got enough things to cover um, that are uh, going to cover the time available in the meeting. The worst thing you can do is to kind of run out of time um, or run out of things to talk about in the meeting and you're both sitting there staring at each other because the client is then thinking, why am I paying to sit and stare at this person who's not doing anything? So make sure you've got more than enough bullet points to um, to talk about in the meeting or to discuss in the meeting. There's a template agenda in the Business Coach Kit resources for coaching meetings, which you can adapt. Um, and the Systemization Planner um, Stroke Roadmap can be used for guidance. So um, I don't know if you're working on, um, let's say, the vision statement for the business now, and that was the action you gave them. You're thinking, OK, what, what, what's up next? Well, it's either the marketing story or maybe my one page strategy. OK. So you're looking at maybe the delegation plan is something you need to do. So you've got two or three things that are going to take the systemization forward, take your coaching forward. You may not get to them. It doesn't matter if you don't get to them because it means you've got something else which is more useful to talk about in, in that meeting, more useful for the client, I would say. OK, don't be late. This is largely the same as the first meeting. Allow them to control the direction and content of the meeting. So. Where you want to get them to is where you have a standard agenda with all the information provided to all participants beforehand and uh, you follow that agenda through in a, an efficient and effective manner. You're to start with a long way away from this and as long as you can keep clinging to the agenda, bringing people back to the things you want to cover, making systemization progress, it doesn't matter too much whether you follow that agenda you know, line by line as set out. But, um, you know, what you don't want to do is spend the whole two hours or three hours rambling or listening to the client ramble with, you know, with no structure at all to the meetings. You do need to keep bringing people back uh, when you feel you're not making progress. Often a client will have something that's gone wrong or happened since the last meeting, whether that's a, maybe an employee left or a new client or some product issue. So it's really difficult to get them to talk about strategy, the long term, if they've got something that's nagging at there or worrying them. So let them get, get, let them get that off their chest. Talk about any engines on fire um, before the meeting. This will be useful anyway, because <clears throat> as we said before, guarantee there will be opportunities as you help them think through what they can do about this to emphasize, reinforce systemization principles and um, use it as an excuse to, to you know, get them to make some changes along the systemization roadmap. <clears throat> Review and discuss the actions agreed at the previous meeting. Uh, again, whether they've completed or not completed. Um, if they have completed them, great. You're onto a winner, a client that, that gets on with it. Um, so you can review, suggest, you know, two goods for every bad. So find the things that are good about what they've done before you suggest any improvements. If they've not completed it, uh, then we're going to talk about that in a, in a little while, about where um, coaching starts to go off track. Um, but take every opportunity to be positive and complimentary on, on progress. As the KPI sheet develops, uh, then this really starts to form the basis of the meeting more and more. It's a separate training session on creating and using a KPI sheet with your clients. To start with, just use a simple agenda. OK, um, this is really the same as the first meeting. You want them to do most of the talking, um, but you ask what you need to be asking is pointed questions to get them to think more clearly about the issue that they're trying to deal with. They will often know the answer. Um, they just haven't got around to sort of sifting through the things in their mind. So um, you're asking questions to, to clarify their thinking on a topic. You're, as much as anything, teaching them to someone to be a manager is, is really teaching them to think clearly about problems and to, and to come up with, uh, you know, rational decisions. Um, draw parallels from your experience if you can <clears throat> help with this thinking. If you can't if you think well i've never heard of this before I'm, I'm a bit i'm a bit at sea then you know we're back to our five whys or clean questioning so you know you tease out of it what, what why do you think that happened and why do you think this is happening what might be the causes of that what do you think might be a solution for that so you know you're really in coaching mode there rather than consultancy you're, you're really kind of um helping them 
and helping you to understand what the issue is so that you can then um, uh, suggest possible solutions at a later point. Take every opportunity to reinforce systemization principles and the key ones here are clear accountability, delegation, process, KPIs and, and so on. And each meeting, we're really looking for two actions for your client. Two, two actions, I think, in a month meeting, spaced a month apart, uh, the, these are doable, um, as long as they're not huge actions. Don't overload them with you know 23 different things they could do, because none of them will happen and they'll lose faith. OK, close out the meeting, recap the actions. Agree the date and time for the next meeting. Try and end the meeting on a positive note. Um, there will always be something positive. These guys are running businesses, so there's always something to cheer. Um, they're doing a difficult job. Most of them do it pretty well. So let's have some positive words about the progress they're making. Um, you know, it's an occupational hazard for consultants, certainly, to focus on negatives, things that need fixing. Um, we we want to end on a positive note. Follow up as for the initial meeting, write up your notes ideally straight away. Um, you get some insight when you're writing that. So things that you know when you go through the notes you've made and try and organize them in some way to feed back to the clients that you know insights will appear to you, things you forgot to say in the meeting. You can say you can add those in. So you give it a little bit of structure that, that is a, a kind of a useful summary uh, for the client, includes the actions and so on and so on and so forth. Attach one or two guides or tools, if, if relevant. And again, remind them of the date and make sure your technology isn't going to let you down with putting that in your diary. Now, staying on track. So I mentioned a couple of slides ago, you know, what if they haven't done the actions that they agreed to do? I mean, that's one, that's one of the the symptoms when you start to drift off track. You, so you find yourself having the same conversation meeting after meeting and it's not moved forward. They're not completing actions, usually blaming, oh, I'm busy, on oh, this happened or that happened. Um, okay, I mean, sometimes, you know, if they, they broke a leg or got married or whatever, then, yeah, okay, fair enough, you, you make allowances. But if it's just a business that is making them busy, then you go back to them and say, you know, this is a choice. You have a choice about where you spend your time. Um, completed actions might be done, but they're not making a difference. You know, so they're kind of shelfware. Things are being done, but they're not being embedded in to the business. They're not changing anything. And you get this feeling that you're not really helping the client as much as you were before. If you're not looking forward to the meetings as much, you feel that, you know, it's actually, a, am I actually adding any value to this chap's business? He's paying me money. I don't feel I'm helping him. So it's a general sort of negativity about the whole thing. So what do we need to do about this? Well, every three, three or four meetings, or whenever you feel that uh, things got stuck in the mud, go back to the objectives that you agreed in meeting one. And say, you know, at the start of the meeting, usually, OK, one of the things I'd like to talk about uh, this meeting is, is you know, the objectives, what you're trying to achieve with systemization and, and my coaching and, and what progress we're um, making. So check that they're still relevant. You know, because things do change. They know what they didn't know when when you agreed these objectives. And, um, you know, there's no problem with you, the pair of you between you changing what these are now. But, you um, check they are still relevant and, and say ask the client, well, how do you feel about the process you know are you do you think you're making progress in a direction at the speed you wanted to um and um you know you well either way if they say yes or no you've got a conversation haven't you uh, if they say no you can kind of violently agree and, and go into the next so or if they say yes you can so like uh, you know I, from my perspective, I'm, I'm not so happy about it. So it's your, you know, your job. You know, don't let them just go on being happy when you feel they're not making progress. You need to really, um, you know, call them out, call them out on that one. So discuss your assessment of their progress. Um, so you could use a systemization planner. So if you're using that with your client and you can go back to, OK, this is where you were when we started. This is my latest assessment of, of where you are in terms of um, actions and progress we've made. 
or you can print out uh, the systemization roadmap as more of a graphical view of things just you know kind of highlight the things that you feel have been done and done well and highlight the things that are still yet to be done and maybe the things that haven't worked so you know you've got two uh, views there of the same sort of systemization um, framework and where you feel that uh, your clients got to um, one thing that works sometimes is to say well you know I'm you know you need to develop your own action plan here um, rather than me saying these are things you do let's let's why don't you set down things you want to change and achieve by when and we'll kind of work towards that together so it, that really helps sometimes in getting the client you know, restarted get their engine started again and they're they they feel instead of you know it's just oh no i've got that coaching meeting again this month i haven't done anything they they, they feel a sense of ownership that they might not otherwise have and you know the finally you know the long and the short of it is you need to call them if you don't think it's working it doesn't help you it doesn't help them so if there is no commitment to change if they're not making the right choices about the way they run their business um you need to say you know i'm sorry i don't think this is going to work and um i don't want to keep taking your money and i've i've actually got other people that probably will make it work so um yeah don't just let the thing drift and and that kind of discussion up free and frank usually will you know we'll get the thing re-energized yeah this lack of time is a as i say a perennial excuse um i've got no interest in these time management strategies and turning your email off and uh, booking a day out of the office and, and all this kind of nonsense there's two things they need to do really one is delegate everything they can and this is a part of systemization is delegation it's a real key part of it so if they're not doing that systemization is not going to work so you know that if they're delegating they will have more time so if they haven't got more time it's because they're not delegating properly and that, that having delegated everything you can what's left deal with it once and do it quickly and that might mean sticking it in the junk folder or in the f filing it in the bin straight away but but you know don't uh, prevaricate with things explain that the way they run their business is, is a choice it's not dictated by the business all businesses all successful businesses will always be busy that's what successful businesses are so there's never going to be some happy time where the thing is running itself and they are not busy until they've changed the way they run it so you, you know you need to get over the point of them it is their choice it's like having a gym membership and never going to the gym okay paying a coach and not listening so don't duck this they are your client they are paying the bills but they're paying you to tell them the truth so you need to take this one on this lack of time thing so in summary successful businesses are organized businesses we teach people how to be organized um, the systemization planner provides a framework for our coaching meetings and successful coaching meetings require preparation a plan and a quick uh, accurate follow-up when you're coaching people there will be periods when you get a lot of momentum you need to be alert to these things and and do something about them and finally you need to explain to your clients that the way they run their business is a choice and they need to make the right choices if they want to grow their business okay that's it